another Ryobi One Plus HP 18 volt power tool. This time it's a new Cirque saw. We'll dig into the details and use it when we get back. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. This is the brand new brushless seven and a quarter inch circular saw from Ryobi. It's part of their One Plus 18 volt HP lineup. Now, for the last few months, Ryobi's been releasing more of the HP tools. They first started out with kind of a small portion of their compact series HP tools that kind of entered the market with that HP moniker, if you will. Now they're branching out into their full line of HP tools that we'll be see rolling out this month in February. Now this is their circular saw, seven and a quarter inch, 4,300 RPMs. Does it have the guts to actually break into that pro category? Now, we know that Ryobi's always done really well at that DIY level, that homeowner weekender, if you will, but can it actually break into that pro level like they're wanting to do? Well, let's look at the details. Let's look at some of the features on this. Let's use it, and then we'll come back and give you our opinion. What we have here is the new Ryobi HP 7 quarter inch circular saw. The model number is the PBL CS 300. So as I mentioned, seven and a quarter inch circ saw. So your typical circ saw, this is a blade right design, meaning hand on the handle, uh, blade is right of the hand. So a blade left would be, the, the blade would be over here. There's positives and negatives from on that. Uh, you'll see different ones, but regardless, that's what we have here. Obviously it's gonna be different on whether you're cutting right hand, left hand, uh, how you like to cut, how you, uh, like to see the cut and so forth. I'm not gonna get into all that science and options right now, but it is a blade right design. Uh, pretty typical on here, a lot of these, uh, typical lever to lift up to adjust the depth. And that goes uh, from obviously to all the way down, which is at two and seven sixteenths of a depth cut. That's at 90 degrees, or you can go up as high as you want to to uh, limit that depth of cut as well. Now, when you turn the bevel to 45 degrees, which is pretty typical when you're wanting to make a, a 45 degree cut, and you can see your indicator there. And so we can put that at 45. Now at 45 degrees, then our depth of cut only go, or, or goes down to one and three quarters of an inch. So not quite full two inches, but any of your two by dimensional lumber, your two by fours, two by twelves, two by sixes, and so forth you'll still be able to get all the way through because most of those are just, uh, you know, one and five eighths or so. So one and three quarter inch depth uh, at the max when at a 45 degree bevel. However, when you are at a 45 degree bevel, one thing I like to see on here, on the shoe here, you'll see your, uh, your vis line here where you can actually see the line that you may have marked on your sheet goods or on your dimensional lumber. And then at a 45, your blade um, where your blade actually integrates to the lumber or to the wood uh, changes because it, it's changed on its axis. And so now we have a 45 degree line here as well. So we have our zero degree line or our perpendicular line as well as our 45 degree line. On the back of the shoe, we see the same thing. If you can see this here, uh, we have a zero degree and a 45 degree. So you can see that trailing line as well. Your finish line uh, where you're coming off the line, make sure that you're still you know, staying on that line, if you will. So I like to see that on both. This is a, uh, looks like a stamped out piece of sheet metal for the shoe. I like to see a die cast there, but doesn't seem to be a lot of deflection here. I can definitely create some deflection if I want to, uh, but this is a $129 saw. So a blank or bare tool, this is 129 bucks, or that's what it's gonna be when it hits the shelves. Now, as far as performance on this, we're getting, 4,300 RPM, so part of the HP lineup, so it has the brushless motor, 4,300 RPMs, a little less than some of the other saws we see out there, but performance-wise, we don't know yet. We'll find out in just a moment. It's gonna take advantage of any HP batteries, so we'll be running the uh, three amp hour, which is an HP battery, it's part of their HP. Then we're, we'll probably run a, a four amp hour that's not an HP battery, and then maybe one of the higher capacity HP batteries as well just to see if we see any difference in the performance on this saw. Not gonna do a whole lot of battery changes, but again, try to see if we can see a difference. Uh, some other things about this saw, um, pretty typical, as I mentioned, blade right design. So what that's gonna mean is 
you've got number one you've got an onboard allen wrench which will probably last all of about 30 minutes any onboard tools i seem to lose right away regardless i can't fault ryobi for that um, so we've got our onboard allen wrench and it's going to be a standard lefty loosey righty tighty that's because it's a blade right design if it was blade left it would have to be the other way because again it's just going by the torque of the blade on the screw so it is going to be your standard uh, it's going to be a 5 8 arbor uh, it includes with the kit you get a 24 tooth says carbide tooth uh, ryobi blade not sure how well this is going to do but what we'll do we'll try it out with the ryobi blade make a few cuts and then we may change it over to a more uh, kind of uh, industry standard blade if you will and we'll change that out if you will um, and we also get a vacuum port so if we want to you know hook up our dust extractor then uh, just with the included screw here screws right here onto the die cast um, uh, guard here and so that fits right on put your screw in it's a torx head screw it looks like probably a t20 t25 something like that and then you can hook up your your vacuum port to pull any dust off of it uh, another couple of items here you have an onboard led right here stick our battery in here so you see it's doing its best to shine down on the light where you're going to be looking at it not sure how well that does but we'll find out here in a moment also you have something else here so if you can see down in here we have uh, obviously an exhaust port for the for the brushless motor to exhaust uh you know dissipate some of that heat but we see this big deflector here almost looks like a mud guard if you will in a truck and it looks like it's deflecting it down toward the blade now i'm assuming what that's doing is keeping that line clear so this exhausting here is blowing right there on the line keep that dust off of your line that you're trying to look at uh, to keep that clean and dust free uh, for making your cut typical spindle lock right here so you can lock out the the uh, the blade and then take your blades off uh, and then a trigger lock as well so right here you see your trigger lock and your secondary or auxiliary handle whatever you want to call that so let's go out and use this thing see what we think one more thing i wanted to mention is uh right here kind of through the handle you can see it or up here is your indicator so you can see that right through there a little difficult to see from this side and from this side it's a little difficult to see as well uh, but you can see it uh, basically your depth of cut so if i wanted to set it two inches set it right there and then again you can see my indicator through the handle there and uh, read this right here okay the first thing we're going to do as i mentioned i'm leaving the ryobi blade on there for right now i'm running a three amp hour battery and the first thing i'm going to do is just run some sheet good cuts just to see how well it tracks a lot of times that can have to do with a blade as well but again as the saw and in perpendicular um, at a 90 degree cut just want to know does it track decent or do i have to really force it one way or the other so i'll make a couple of fast cuts and then we'll go on from there and i did put the dust port on here that may may or may not exhaust really well but i just wanted to run it on there and i'll hook up a dust extractor here later as well okay as far as cutting obviously cut that really easy that's three quarter inch plywood we'll try it again this time i'll run a so i can stop it if i want to with that blade on there let me run that again Definitely if I'm pushing it hard, I can stop it, but just a regular cut. Seems to cut just fine. Now let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and change out that blade. I mentioned push my arbor lock there, got the battery out. Blum. 
Okay, so now I've got my Diablo blade on there. Let's see if that makes a difference. See if I can push this a little harder now. So I can definitely push it harder, but I can still stop it. Let me do this. Go to my nine amp hour battery. Okay, the nine amp hour battery definitely helped it. Don't seem to be able to cut out like that, but I'm gonna put the three back in it. It's like we're down to three bars. Let's try some other cuts. So I'm gonna go to a 45 degree cut in the same sheet goods here. It definitely bogged it down, but cut through it just fine. Okay, I've got a two by eight pressure treated. Uh, just going to use my speed square here, make a couple of cross cuts, see how well it does. Again, using the three amp hour battery. I'm one bar down, so I've got three bars left. Let's see how well it does. Definitely seems like it wants to take off right. It definitely wants to take off right when I don't have both hands on it. I just kind of let it make it cut. but not bad. Let's do a 45 on that. So cutting two by material, no problem, even at a 45. Let me do this. You can tell it's bogging pretty bad. I'm gonna go to the nine amp hour. And let's see if we pick up any performance on that. I'm definitely picking up performance on the nine amp hour. It's a big battery, but it's definitely helping out. Hit a nail on that one. Glad I've got the demo demon in here. One more here. Yeah, with a three amp hour, it definitely didn't want to make that 45 cut all the way through that two by eight nice and easy. But with the, with the nine amp hour, you can push, push it pretty good. Let's see how we do with this LVL. Again, having that nine amp hour in there helps a ton. Let me put this four amp hour, which is not an HP battery. See how we do. That actually does pretty well as well. Not bad at all. Now this is the one where people really like to get infatuated with of doing a max depth cut on a four x four. And with a contractor saw, I definitely see that of, you know, seeing how well it'll do. With this saw, I don't see this being that absolute pro grade, uh, you know, um, do all professional carpenter saw. Uh, but I'm gonna do it just, just to let you know. I've got a piece of PT, uh, four x four, 
and we're gonna set max of depth cut. So we've got it bottomed out and we're gonna run it through here, see how well it does, see if it cuts out, see if it cuts well, blah, blah. Here we go. A lot of dust flying, cut out several times. Let's change that out for the nine amp hour and see if we don't get a stronger cut there. Okay, it looks like we heated it up enough that it cut out on us and probably gonna have to let it cool off a second. Okay, after about a minute, it cooled off enough, started back up and finished that cut. I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna hook the dust extractor up to it and see if we can't pull some more of that dust away and maybe that will clear it enough to make that cut clean. By the way, a one and seven eighths will go around the outside and one and a quarter will go on the inside. So you saw for yourself the performance of this saw. Now, is it absolutely off the charts awesome? No. But is it terrible? No, it's not that either. I think it's got its fit. Is it breaking into that pro category? That's a big if. It really depends on what you're wanting to do. If this is going to be your full-time saw, you're a full-time framer, maybe if you're a beginner, maybe if you're breaking into that trade, it's going to work for you. Uh, but compared to a lot of the pro level saws, it really doesn't have the guts that those do. Now, will it get the job done? Absolutely. If you're cutting sheet goods all day, all day long, you know, you're cutting three quarter inch plywood. It doesn't matter if you're making bevels or not. It's going to get you by. It's going to do quite well for you. For a $129 saw, it's going to do really well for you. Or maybe you're typically a power cord type of saw user and you just want that supplemental tool that's battery powered. You're wanting to break into that cordless platform. Absolutely, be a great choice for you. Or maybe you're that full-blown Ryobi user. Well, why not? This will be the best saw for you if you're looking at the Ryobi platform. So it does real well there. Just when you're looking at the true pro category and you're looking at full depth of cut, which by the way, full, those full depth of cut uh, tests, I don't put a lot of value on that because rarely are you doing that. If you are, you're doing a cross cut across a six by six or a four by four, and you know, you're making two cuts and you're done. And those are four inch cuts, six inch cuts. Rarely are you doing a full length rip uh, with the blade all the way down. Again, some of you may say, oh, I do that all the time, which great, but grab a worm drive saw. Uh, this is a sidewinder. So again, I don't wanna put a whole lot of value on that full depth of cut ripping down that pressure treated four by four but it does tell you a little bit of a tale. Now we were interested in the fact that it really didn't seem to pick up a lot of performance off the three amp hour HP battery versus the regular four amp hour battery that's not an HP battery. Now this is supposed to take advantage of the HP batteries. 
we really didn't see that performance jump. Now, definitely when we went to the nine amp hour, we did see the saw pick up some RPMs as well as just kind of be able to more so be able to keep the RPMs up as you go through the cut and uh, less able to actually stall the blade. Now, could you stall the blade uh, even cutting through sheet goods? Yes, absolutely. I could push this hard enough. I, I can probably stop about any saw. Anyway, my point is, but just a nice pace through sheet goods, whether you're cutting a 45 or, or a 90, it did quite well. Um, it does want to kind of run off to the right a little bit when you're pushing it hard through dimensional lumber. Not terrible. You could correct it easily with a little input from your hand. So again, is it a perfect saw? No, it's not. Is it great for a beginner? Yes. Is it great for that entry level pro and you like your Ryobi tools? Absolutely try it out. It's $129 bare tool. If you already have batteries, great. And then you can find some different, you know, uh, battery deals out there. I would highly recommend at least a four amp hour battery if you're going to go to this saw and really for any circular saw because this is not the type of tool that you're wanting to put a slim pack in. You're just not going to get very many cuts. You're going to get frustrated. Let me mention one more thing. As far as dust extraction on this, it was quite dusty. Even though we had a lot of wind blowing and blowing a lot of that stuff away, uh, even when we had it indoors and trying it as well, it seems to create a lot of dust, not just coming out the dust port and even with the dust, uh, the, the vac port off of it, still creates a lot of dust here on the front side. It sa stays pretty clear out of your line of sight. It's not like it piles up there. Uh, but it does create a lot of dust, even with the vacuum hooked on there. So, you know, some of you may say, well, it's a saw, it's supposed to make dust. Great, you'll be happy with it. But if you're looking for one of those saws where it just seems to evacuate every bit of the saw dust, this is not that saw. Could be better, but it's not horrible. Just wanted to let you know. Ryobi is claiming 325 or 345 cuts on a battery. Don't know if they're using a, you know, a six amp hour or nine amp hour, whatever. Um, again, I don't put a lot of value on that because everybody's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I will say with the nine amp hour battery, all the cuts we did, you know, we're down to just one cell. So we still got three cells on here. Uh, so that's going to give you a lot of cuts. Even with the four, four amp hour or six amp hour, you're going to get quite a lot of cuts with that. Uh, so check it out for yourself. Should be seeing these hit the shelves this month here in February. Uh, definitely by March should be seeing these at Home Depot. Three year warranty on these HP tools and check them out for yourself at Home Depot or at homedepot.com. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button, but only if you like this video and hey, if you didn't like the video, give us that thumbs down, but would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.